So cybersecurity might seem like a relatively new discipline, but the concepts actually go way back in history. Julius Caesar and the other ancients used encryption. The ancient Greek city-states developed formidable walls to keep out enemies. And Romans, that when they created aqueducts, they often used redundancy to ensure the availability of water. To help you understand security, I want to back up in time a little bit. More like a millennium or so. You need to head back in time and across the pond to medieval Europe. By the first millennia, Europeans had developed a living system of small manor houses surrounded by defensive earthworks and palisades. But as roaming marauders and enemy armies pillaged towns, village defense morphed into something much more robust, the castle. These castles were pretty ingenious with many layers of security. First, there was the moat and a bridge to make it difficult to even access the location. Then there was a gate and a wall that made entry much more difficult. There were charging, armor-clad knights that could spring an offensive defense, and an inner castle just as strong as the outer one. Decrees were issued to tell castle dwellers how to dwell safely, and sword fighting drills to sharpen skills, and a vault inside the inner castle as one final holdout in the case of an attack. And this layered approach to security improved the chances of the community surviving attacks. And that is the perfect foundation for this cybersecurity bootcamp, a layered approach to security. Because every organization needs security layers in order to survive the digital age's marauding pillagers. We're going to take a look at the basics of security in the cyber age. We'll talk about the growing cyber threat and why cyber skills are so desired. What actually even is cybersecurity? What are the core concepts, the pillars? We'll understand the various kinds of attacks today. We'll talk about the roles and career paths in history and a lot more. So first up, let's talk about the rising cyber threat. Recent decades have brought about an explosive dependence on IT infrastructure in our daily lives. Just think about it. Think about voting systems, pharmacy systems, banking systems, the online shopping you do, vehicles themselves. All of these items are dependent on computer systems and especially much more than they were several decades ago. Another reason for this rising cyber threat is more users, aka targets, are on connected devices and using them on a daily basis. Just think about how much more you use technology than you did 20 years ago or than your parents did depending on your age 30 years ago. 30 years ago, for example, people carried around a pager. If they needed to contact someone, they got a page and they went to the nearest phone to make that call. That was back in the days of pay phones. Remember those? Anyhow, now everyone just carries a phone with them in their pockets at all hours of the day and they can receive calls directly. Another factor in the rising cyber threat is that cyber attackers are able to cause more disruption and damage than ever before. Think about the Colonial Pipeline ransomware attack a couple years ago, or the ransomware attack on the JV Meat Corporation, or even there were several hospital attacks during COVID. Despite criminal groups promising to leave healthcare alone for the good of humanity, still there were ransomware attacks and in some instances, some people claim that those ransomware attacks even cause lives to be lost. The disruption that attackers can cause is worse than ever before. Okay, another factor in this rising uh, cyber threat is that cyber criminals are making significant investments into their infrastructure, into their capabilities, into their skill sets. If you look at the history of cyber attacks and hackers, it was once dominated by lone hackers and small groups. Think of people like Kevin Mitnick, um, some of those types of hackers who worked alone or in small groups, they didn't cause a lot of disruption. They did it in a lot of cases just for the thrill of it, right? If we think about the Moore Swarm and some of these other early computer attacks. Now, cybercrime has become a focal point for organized crime, nation states, as well as dubious companies. For an example, think about the rise of ransomware as a service. There are several groups doing this, Conti. Um, and various other ones where they will provide ransomware infrastructure. Someone else can come along. They find a way to put it onto an organization to um, effect the ransomware, and they just split the profits with the ransomware as a service gain. There have been recent busts of these in Russia and around the world. All of this goes to show how the underworld and organized crime groups are rallying around cybercrime as a means of financial gain. And finally, there simply aren't enough people to handle all of the work that needs to be done in the cybersecurity space.
There is a significant demand for cybersecurity professionals today. Now, what exactly is cybersecurity? What do you think about when the term cybersecurity is tossed around? Hackers, good or bad, you might think of coding, you might think of complex encryption algorithms, maybe math geniuses, people who are really, really smart. But cybersecurity is actually about assessing threats and mitigating risks. For an example, crossing the street. Depending on where you live, if you walk, drive, etc., you probably cross the street multiple times a day, multiple times a week. And that transaction that you do, you assess threats and you mitigate a risk. What's the threat? There's a threat that a car coming is not going to stop and will hit you. Right? So what? how do you mitigate that threat? You stay on the sidewalk until the car passes. You look both ways. You are mitigating the threat of that car hitting you. Maybe you wear bright clothes or reflective items if you're walking at night. So back to cybersecurity. That all means that by gaining a little knowledge about the cyber threat landscape, what are those threats that actually face organizations? You could get into cybersecurity, aka information security, without being a master coder, without being a hacker, or even a forensic investigator. There are roles in the cybersecurity field for people of all skill sets. So that brings us to the topic of the non-technical roles within the cybersecurity field. And as you can see in the illustration, the cybersecurity field is made up of many domains across a wide range of skill sets, backgrounds, etc. You have security architecture, the security design that addresses the requirements and the potential risk of a given scenario or environment. It also specifies when and where to apply security controls in an organization, etc. Coming up with a framework for security. There's security operations. This is the group responsible for the process of identifying, containing, and remediating those threats on behalf of a company or an organization. You might have a security operations center. There are management people required to manage teams of security operations personnel. There's governance. Governance is a framework for managing and performing risks, just like we talked about with crossing the street. Governance conducts oversight of compliance and control responsibilities. They define the cyber mission of an organization by mapping the structure, the authority, and the processes to create an effective program. This requires project management. This requires bringing teams and groups together, legal, technical, HR, training employees. There's a lot in this governance domain that does not require technical skills. There's physical security. Protection of personnel, hardware, software, networks, and data from physical actions and events that could cause serious loss or damage. This includes protection from fire, floods, natural disasters, burglary, thefts, vandalism, and even terrorism. These are all things that have to be discussed as part of a cybersecurity program for an organization. But there's threat intelligence, the research and analyzation of evidence-based knowledge regarding an existing or emerging menace, an emerging threat. And that can take people with backgrounds from things like government intelligence, people who know languages, who can read different languages to report to an organization. There's the career development domain, training of future cybersecurity professionals, helping them get certifications, helping organize training events. There's the risk assessment domain, analyzing what can go wrong, how likely that is to happen, what the potential consequences are, and how tolerable that risk is so that the organization can figure out what needs to be done to mitigate, transfer, or elsewise deal with that risk. There's user education, teaching users in a company how to protect themselves from cyber attacks by informing them of risk, exploits, external threats, and the skills that are needed to combat common attacks. Are you good teaching? Do you like to teach people? Maybe that's the domain for you. And there's frameworks and standards, creation of new cybersecurity frameworks and practices for professionals to follow. That is a field within itself, creating these frameworks, updating frameworks to provide to organizations. I've been privileged to work in this domain on a couple of occasions, helping some common frameworks revise over various iterations. And it can be very rewarding doing that kind of work. There are many, many pathways that you can take to try to get into cybersecurity. You can come from a technical background, technical feeder role, if you want to call it, but there are also many non-technical backgrounds that work very well in cybersecurity. In fact, we need non-technical people in the industry, perhaps more than technical in some cases.
We need people who can bring a new mindset, new ideas, fresh attitudes, and various backgrounds to the industry to help revolutionize the way we're doing things. Cybersecurity does not need groupthink. Do you come from a management background? Maybe you could be a project manager. Maybe you could manage security teams. These roles are generally much less technical than the hands-on people. They still require some knowledge, but the emphasis here is on management. Do you have a financial risk background? Maybe you could get into risk assessments. Auditing, IT auditing, security auditing. All that to say there are many pathways into security that don't require a technical background. And if you want to improve your chances, there are dozens and dozens of certifications you can get from the offensive security, the penetration testing and ethical hacking, to security architecture, to security environments, building out secure environments to compliance. There are many, many certifications you can get. So as you can see, you can get into cybersecurity without a technical background, without certifications, without degrees, there are plenty of roles and plenty of pathways into the industry for you. So maybe it's time for you to get into cybersecurity.